Hello folks, today we are tying up a quite simple caddis larva. This is actually one of my top uh, nymphs to fish or yeah, subsurface flies because uh, it always seems to work and it's quite easy. I like to tie them on a, on a hook like this shape to have a little bend to it like these uh, larvas have when they yeah fall with the stream or so and they have a little twist to their body not totally straight and I like to use a little bit of weight you can have a small bead uh, but I like to have a um, little bit of lead free wire And I, I tie this in quite big sizes actually, from size, this is a size 8, just mostly to show you, but um, rarely smaller than, than 14, uh, mostly like 10 12 or in this case also 8. So this is just for having a little bit of weight to the fly. And then I, this is kind of, of important, but uh, first I will use this brown nano silk thread. This is, uh, you can use a black or olive, but brown is, is a quite nice. And this is a 12 watt. This will also be for ribbing the fly. So that is why I use this a little bit heavier th thread of these nano silks. Uh, instead of this 18 or 24 aught or so. So I tie this in and try to get a little bit of thread over this lead wire so when I will dub this the, the dubbing won't sink into um, sink into to, um, the lead. <coughs> And now I just put this here because that will be the ribbing later. Now I take the Semper Flea uh, 18 odd in a black or olive, doesn't matter either, but something to match the fly. This is a black one. And I tie it down like that. <clears throat> and now I will start with mixing two kind of dubbings. This is ice dub, holo olive. Really nice with a, just a little little holographic flash effect. Not much as many of the other ice dubs. And this is the snowshoe rabbit foot dubbing, tannish olive. So I will mix those together and you will have a really nice <coughs> colorization of the dubbing that you will use. <coughs> oh, a little bit too much there. So I just take them together and, and mix them up. 50-50 uh, of both of them. Maybe a little more maybe 60 40 for the natural dubbing. Uh, you can also use hair stub or something scroll dub just to mix them together. <clears throat> but I'll really love this uh, snowshoe snowshoe rabbit foot dubbing. So then you have a really nice dubbing blend. So now I will do a dubbing loop. for this and I take the thread to the hook eye and this is not supposed to be like a lot <clears throat> like always be careful with with the dubbing so you don't overdo it too much maybe it will take a little bit of practice before you get it right but don't take too much of it. Maybe I also took a little bit too 
too little, but we will see. No, oh. kind of perfect, yeah. Oh, yeah. is noise. I just brush it a little bit. And then for the back we will use this material which is called tin skin. This is a yellow, you can use whatever color you want. But this is sort of a yellow one. And I cut a strip that is 1.8 inches or like 3 millimeters. <clears throat> But you can, it's all also depending how much, how big the fly is and also. So now I will just tie this in like this. Cut this off. And whip finish because we now we can use that thread that I was working with in the beginning for both ribbing and of course to end the fly and I spin it a little bit so it won't lay flat when you tie this And then you have to get a little bit you don't want to get so much material width when you do these turns so it will get all messy And when you do these wraps, you can just pull them a little bit harder to get a little bit of segmentation to the fly, as you can see. You can also use this as a gamorous imitation, of course, which is works perfect for. But I mostly fish it like a caddis fly. And then, of course, we will cut this off here. So, there it is. This is a perfect caddis imitation. You can also just put a little drop of super glue there. So, it's quite simple and it fishes perfect. So, tie up. A few and fish them as both gamaros and uh, caddisflies. Thanks!